Hello, Chris Sexton with Team Synergy. Welcome to part four of our E6, E slash E5 build series. Um, I got a lot of feedback via email and print board personal message. Uh, I made a comment that I had already cut the boom and torque tube for my E6 stretch optimized for 630, 606 blades. Um, I had a lot of people who were apparently really hoping to, I would show them what I did. So what I have done is I held off on doing the boom supports. I'm going to talk about epoxy and those. And I have not cut my control rod yet. And then I took an extra N5C boom. Fortunately, uh, I have a few of these. So um, it's not going to hurt the thing to have an extra boom laying around should I need one. Uh, and I'm going to actually show you the steps I took to measure and cut the boom and torque tube. Um, so what we have here is a few things. I've got a nice... 12-hour set JB Weld. I use that on the um, rod ends. I have an N5C uh, boom, which is currently in stock length, which is going to be uh, able to accept up to 630 millimeter blades if I left it alone. And I have a stock E6 torque tube. Now this torque tube actually belongs to a buddy of mine who is also doing this conversion. I talked him into letting me cut his boom on camera so that we could do demonstrate that because obviously I've already cut the boom for mine. I, um, and then I'm going to show you how I measured it, where, how I mark it, the tool I use to cut it, and the steps I take to make sure I don't actually compress the pipe while doing the cut. So um, first thing we're going to do is cut the mark, measure and mark the boom itself. Now to do that, Matt's already done the math for us. We already know that we could take a stock uh, N5C or E6 boom, cut it down by 60 millimeters, and that will give us plenty of clearance for both 106 or 96 tails. Um, uh, so what I've got here is I have my handy little uh, small metric square that also has metric uh, measurements on it. Uh, one size metric, one size standard. This it comes really in handy. I use this for checking the square on my frames, which is something else we're going to talk about a little later. As well as it does have a 0 to 100 millimeter scale on it, which is perfect when all I need is 60 millimeters. So what we're going to do is I take a Sharpie. The red's not the easiest to see on the black, but it's what I have handy. And it doesn't matter if these booms are uh, omnidirectional, so you can use it from either side. I'm going to take this boom, and I'm going to very carefully line up the, the, um, excuse me, the square with the end of that boom. And then I'm going to look at 60 millimeters, which is here. Now when you measure this, err on the side of caution. Make your line... A little longer than 60 if you need to. Be sure you're not cutting more than 60 off. You'd rather it be a millimeter too long than five millimeters too short. So there we go. Mark, mark is right at 60. The square is, edge, is flush with the edge of the tool. I set that down. Close my marker. Now, like I said, it's probably really hard to see on camera, but I can see that red Sharpie line right there. Now I open up my pipe cutter we talked about earlier. This is just a pretty simple steel pipe cutter. Make sure you get one that's big enough to go around 22 millimeter because that's as big as the boom is stock. And I'm going to put that blade, sorry you're going to see my head in the camera here for a minute, put that blade on that red mark. And again I'm going to the inside of that red mark because like I said before I'd rather it be a half a millimeter or a millimeter too long than too short. Um, and I'm just going to tighten up my tool until it just starts to leave a score line. Just barely score it. And that goes right through the edge of my mark. So that is good. Now I'm gonna turn the boom all the way around, let it score it all the way around. Make sure it's scoring a straight line. Make sure the tool's not walking down the tube, which of course mine is. You gotta be real careful not to let that walk. He has to score a pretty straight line or you're going to be in a world of trouble. Sometimes it just takes a little bit more pressure. To, there we go. Now it's scoring straight. Little bitty turns at a time. Give the, Tighten the tool a little bit. Turn it a little bit. The idea here is slow and patient. This is not a race. If you get in a hurry and crank this tool down too much at a time, you're actually going to start deforming the, the boom rather than cutting it. This boom is not real thick. It won't take a whole lot of this. This tool is brand new, so it is very sharp. 
I'm just rotating my hand. Going all the way around a couple of times every time I tighten it. Do not want to compress the boom. This is another one that this is another situation where slow and steady wins this race. You can see what's really marking that boom now. Again, little cuts, little tightens. I'm not going real fast at all. I do not want to compress the boom. I want to cut it. And I'm done. Cuts clean. Check it out. Might be a little bit of a burr there. Nothing, a little bit of a uh, couple of different tools I use. I like to actually take my reamer and just check it out just to make sure the edge is good now this is going to be really hard to see on camera but I'm going to try to show you that cut is square straight and it's not jagged cut it nice and slow and the cut is fine just to be safe just to be sure I take my piece I've already cut and measure it right at 60 millimeters that is perfect now all we got to do now is repeat the measurement and the cut on the torque tube. The uh, torque tube is just as easy to measure and cut. Same process. Make sure that's square. These torque tubes are, uh, you're going to have to re-drill the holes. So it doesn't matter which end you measure from. Same thing. Sorry about my head. Go to the same mark on there. That's a lot easier to see on the camera this time, I'm sure. This time, I'm going to turn my tool way in, because obviously this boom torque tube is a lot smaller. Same rules apply though. Make sure you line that guy up with the middle of the rollers in the middle of your mark. And do a little test score, make sure you're going all the way around, give it a little pressure. It's going all the way around square, and the same as the boom slow and steady this is not a race you do not want to try to cut through this in one pass there's no reason to be in a hurry just watch it make sure the blade is coming through your mark every time so you know it's not walking down the street on you this shouldn't take as long to cut aluminum's a little softer on these torque tubes there we go. Same thing. I take my little reamer in there, give it a quick little deburr. Again, the cut is square, clean. Now all I have to do is take my torque tube rod in, insert it in there, get an idea where the pinhole needs to be, and uh, re-drill the hole. And my boom and torque tube are now optimized for 606 millimeter blades. Now, all right. Well, I have the torque tube cut, drilled, ends on. I went ahead and put, um, sorry, ends are on. The um, torque tube bearings are on. These are pretty straightforward. I'll really quickly talk about how I did it. I just slide the bearing on, put a little bit of thin CA, and just slowly etch the bearing up to the catch of the CA, and then I actually sit here and spin it just to make sure it's not getting notchy. I didn't get CA in the, in the bearing. I get a few minutes to dry for both those make sure the distance from here to here here to here and here to here are all three different it just helps keep it from um, allowing harmonic vibrations in the torque tube as it's spinning um, so now I have my 606 optimized torque tube done uh, boom is cut as we said before I went ahead and off camera because it's hard with the, with the drill and everything um, went ahead and drilled the hole for the tailbox pin what I did to do that was I slid the tail box on. Take this screw out real quick. I slid the tail box on all the way. And then I took my driver and I cinched up the clamp. So that's how it would be installed. I took a, this is a three millimeter screw that goes through that hole. So I took a two millimeter drill bit 
and ran it through there with the case on. Went to two millimeter that way it wasn't going to damage the threads in the aluminum. Drill, drilled the pilot hole. Took it back off. And then I took my three mil, excuse me, two and a half mil, reamed it a little bit larger. I left the hole smaller than the threads in the screw because this way when I put it all together, the screw itself will cut a little bit of threads into the boom. And now, I can, when I put this together, line up the hole. When I do this for the final time, I'll use a little Loctite. So this is just for demonstrations. I'm not going to put Loctite on it. Line the hole up. And it's, it turns in no problem. No resistance. Goes all the way in. Tightens up against the aluminum. And even, even though this screw is not tight at all, it's not going anywhere. Now, of course, I'll still tighten the clamp. I'm not suggesting the, the pin is enough. But that tailbox is not going to rotate. When we actually go to install it in the front of the helicopter, I'll do the same thing up here and uh, pin the front. You don't really have to pin the front. There are two pretty massive clamps on the front. Um, but I'm just a creature of habit. I pin the boom on all of them, so I'm going to do it on this one too. And then I did go ahead um, and cut the control rod down. Again, 60 millimeters. I, I just used a handsaw for that. This piece of cake took a second. And then I got my epoxy out and um, scuffed up the tubes. Epoxy these really good with a nice 15 minute quick set and a, and a four hour cure epoxy. Excuse me, six minute um, quick set and a 45 minute hard dip. So it's a good strong, a good strong epoxy. While I was at it, had the epoxy mixed up, I went ahead and did my boom supports. Made sure they stayed square. They're nice and solid now. So now, everything on this tail is ready to go together. I'm going to stop there, though. Um, the electronics are not finalized yet. The motor is in. I got that in. I got the bullets soldered on the motor last night. I got my speed controller. I need to uh, finish soldering up the speed controller wires. I'll probably do that a little bit, too. But the cyclic servos are not in. I did get my rudder servo. I'm using a Savox uh, high volt brushless SB2272 MG. This is a really nice tail servo. I run on a lot of helis. It's 0.03 at 97 um, ounces of torque uh, at 8 volts. So it's really fast. It's a gyro specific servo. Um, like I, I said, I've, I run this on my 700, my 750, and I have one of these in my E5 and now my E6. So it's a good servo. The cyclic servos, I'm actually going to be trying out the new RJX um, high volt cyclic servos that Rob Cherry loves so much. But they're not going to be here to possibly, hopefully tomorrow, possibly Tuesday. So this will be the last video until I get my cyclics. Thanks for keeping in touch.